Hello, everyone, and welcome to this next video lecture. I've been kind of traveling around a bit because I'm back in Chapel Hill to grab our iPad for our upcoming weeks of lectures. So this video lecture is actually going to be on the shorter side. It's just going to be an Excel tutorial to learn how to do scatter plots with categorical da data, building a regression line on that sort of data, and I'm also going to teach us how to draw residual plots. So let's do those. I want to share my screen. All right, I believe you should all be able to see my Excel here. And recall this is data of a bunch of infants, what, in what month they were born, what the average crawling age was for those infants. So how many days after they were born did they eventually start crawling on average? And what was the average temperature in that month? So I actually, I noticed I was reading through these, these temperatures are really low for summer months, which makes me think that this data is actually from the Southern Hemisphere. So a little side note in case you were worried about these strange numbers. Um, so this is a scatter plot of this data. And what I want to do is if I were to build a least square regression line on it, which I can do just by adding chart element and tread line, I want to show us how to draw the residual plots for this least squared regression line. And what we do is the first thing we have to do is we have to find the equation of the line. So if you recall, the equation is equal to y equals b sub zero plus b sub one x. So there are a bunch of different things we have to calculate to be able to get this. One is the standard deviation of the y. So what is the y here? It looks like average calling ages are x and temperatures are y. So we do stdev dot s, grab all of our y variables, press enter. So there's standard deviation of y. Let's do now the standard deviation of x. All of our x variables. We can do the correlation. So that's just c-o-r-r-e-l. And recall, it doesn't actually matter what order we put these in. Then we need the x bar, or the average of the x's, so just the average function. Then we need y bar, or the average of the y's. Cool. <clears throat> and since we have all these five pieces, we can put them together to find our intercept and our slope. So we'll start with slope, which is just the correlation value right here times the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. All right? So that is the slope. It looks like it's negative, which checks out, right? We have a negative slope. We have a negative trend line. We have a trend line that is going up to down, which means a negative slope. <laughs> and we also, next we need to find the y-intercept, which we do by just saying the average of the y's minus this slope times the average of the x's. And boom, we have our least square regression line right here. So once we find our least square regression line, the next step to building a residual plot is to calculate the predicted value for every single one of our x values. So if we have an x value, we can plug it into this equation and get a y value, or a y hat, which is a predicted y value. So let's do so. What is it? It is the y-intercept, which is this value right here, plus the slope, which is this value right here, times x, which is this value. And if I want, oh, yeah. And if I want to only, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a trick in Excel. The first thing you do is you make these C's what we call static, which means you, you put a, a dollar sign up in front and behind the C value. And whenever you do this, you can press enter. It'll calculate the Y hat for this particular X observation. And you can actually just drag it down. And it calculates it for every single possible X value here. So note, the B1 and the B0 for all of these calculations shouldn't change. So look up here at the equation. And note that as I go up and down, the C changes. 
Whereas if I had done this without the without those marks, without those dollar signs, and done it like so, it wouldn't have worked because what's happening is each time it's changing where it's looking for the slope and the intercept. And we wanted that to be the same every time. So if you don't quite understand that, you should come to office hours. But if you do, then just make sure to make these variables is what we call static and make sure the x variable is the one that changes. So we find our y hat for every single value. And next we calculate the residuals for every single value, which as mentioned before, is the observed y value, which is just y here, minus the predicted y value, which is y hat. So this is the residual. And again, we can just pull this down. And now we have a bunch of residuals. And once we have all these residuals, we can build a scatter plot of the average polynomial otherwise known as a residual plot. So, and we just insert a scatter plot, like so. And here's our residual plot. Looking pretty good, if I think so myself, if I say so myself. Note that, hmm, maybe this would be an okay to fit a linear trend, but there's definitely this very influential point on the bottom left. And note, if I were to do what I did last time and take out May, which we noted last time we looked at this data, that was the influential point. Everything kind of rescales. And mm, hmm, this rescaled too. These look better. Again, I'm a little, I might actually try to rebuild this. Maybe Excel's not doing that well. Because I think it should look a little better than that. So I take out May, I rebuild my residual plot. Yeah, this one looks great. And note that they're all evenly scattered above and below the center line. We don't see that sort of like fanning, that horn thing that I call heteroscedasticity. And we're not seeing any particular pattern, like a curve or like a sinusoidal up and down sort of motion. If we were to see a residual plot like this, If we were to see a residual plot like this, we would say, yeah, a linear trend line is a great model for this data. Go ahead and do it, All right? But note that getting a situation where a least squared regression line is a good fit, I had to take out May to make that the case. And you really, actually, you can do that if, if you really examine May and you have a reason to get rid of it. But if you don't have a really good reason to get rid of it, you probably shouldn't be doing that. You can't just take out values you want to ignore because models in which you take out values you want to ignore often don't do very well because they don't consider the exceptional cases that are valid and true cases, even regardless of the fact that they're exceptional. So that's how you make a residual plot. You find your least square regression line, you calculate your predicted y values, and then you calculate the residuals by looking at the observed minus the predicted. If you don't quite understand this static variable thing, come to office hours, and I can try to explain it a little bit better. So that's residual plots. The next thing I want to talk about is one of the things we spoke about briefly at the last lecture, which was looking at categorical, the relationship between a categorical variable and a numeric variable, and fitting a least square regression on that relationship, which is something we can actually do. So in this case, I've made another variable called below freezing. So assuming these temperatures are in degrees Fahrenheit, note that there are a few that the temperature is, I guess, at freezing is 32 or below, which I think it's, there were four such temperatures. I thought there was a 15. Oh, that was May that I took out. I can put May back in. There we go. There's May back in. OK, so May is back in. Note, it is also below freezing. So I have this sort of indicator, 0, 1 variable, where it's 0 if the temp average temperature wasn't below freezing, and 1 if it was below freezing. And just like the other plots I made, I can draw a scatter plot. 
So I want below freezing like so. And I want to look at average crawl, the relationship between average crawling age and below freezing. And let's take a look. Add a scatter plot like we always do. We'll be good statisticians and add some axis labels. So on the x axis is. Average temp below freezing. And on the y axis is average crawling age. Okay. I might also decide I, I want to edit my axes a little bit. So what, they're going between 0 and 1.2. Maybe I'll have them go between negative 0 0.2 and 1.2. Let's check that out. Yeah. So what do we see here? We see all of the, the spread of the values at 0 and the spread of the values at 1. And I went over in class yesterday that you can actually build a least square regression line to this using an indicator variable. So we've already done the work to make, our vari to make the variable below freezing an indicator, right? It's just 0 or 1, just like our indicator variable was in class. So all we really need to do if we want to find the least square regression line is to use Excel to draw it. And indeed, it would seem there is a mild upward trend, but I don't know if the upward trend is really all that convincing. I bet it would be much more convincing if May weren't an, uh, weren't an observation here, because it's pretty clear that this lower outlier, this influential point, is sort of pulling our trend line down. If you want to know what the equation of the line is, just use Excel to draw it for you. And here it is. Okay. And that is how you build, here we'll say, Time. Okay, and that is how you do this particular type of relationship. So that's actually all I wanted to go over. I would suggest maybe watching this video multiple times. Maybe watching this video multiple times so that you can really get a handle on how to do these two different plots. And if you have any trouble, come to office hours. Thanks, everyone.